In this video, I'll be reviewing the Grinnell Kroner model that is used to estimate the return of equity markets. Now, in the CFA Level 3 syllabus, this comes under the readings on uh, capital market expectations. So it's pretty much the same model as the last few years, but there are some uh, new sub-components and also a different way of calculating when uh, we are assuming a long-run horizon. So let's review through the model. So first we have the expected return on equity. Okay, and then this is approximately equals to D over P, which is the dividend of a price. And this is the dividend yield of the equity market plus the expected nominal earnings growth return. And then we minus the percentage change in shares outstanding. And then lastly, we plus the expected repricing return or the percentage change in price to earnings ratio of the equity market. Now we look at the subcomponents. So first, if you look at the bracket, okay, we have the this bracket here represents the growth rate of earnings per share. For example, if the expected percentage change in shares outstanding is negative three percent, that means there is a net share repurchase of three percent of the shares, which is a decline in the percentage change in shares outstanding. So a negative figure also represents or implies that the EPS grows faster than total earnings. Now, if you were to take the dividend yield minus the percentage change in shares outstanding, that would give us the expected cash flow return or income return. And the percentage change in the price to earnings ratio plus the expected change in nominal earnings growth return would, is what we call the expected capital gains. Now let's look at an example. We have John Tell that uses the Greenall Kroner model in forecasting developed market equity returns. So Tell makes the following forecast. So there is a 2.4% dividend yield on US equities, a 1.5% rate of net share repurchases for US equities, a long-term corporate earnings growth rate of 5% per year, an expected US nominal GDP growth rate of 4%, an expansion rate of uh, P for PE multiples of 0.6% per year, so calculate the expected return on US equities. So based on the model, so the dividend yield is 2.4%. Then we add in the expected uh, corporate earnings growth return uh, or rate of 5% per year. Then we minus the net share repurchase, which is a negative uh, number. So this will be bracket negative 1.5%. Okay, and then we add in the expansion of the P multiple of 0.6% per year. Now, adding this up, we would have okay, expected return of 9.5% for US equities. Now, what if you are asked to calculate the expected cash flow or income return on US equities? So, that will be the dividend yield minus the percentage change in shares outstanding. So, calculating this number, this will be 2.4%. Okay, minus uh, negative 1.5%. So this will be 3.9% expected cash flow return or income return. Then for expected capital gains on US equities, uh, we'll take the percentage change in corporate earnings and then we'll add to the percentage change in uh, the PE multiple. So we'll take percentage change in corporate earnings and then plus percentage change in the PE multiple. So this will be 5% plus 0.6%. Uh, so that's 5.6%. Uh, now, if you're asked to calculate the growth rate of earnings per share, that would be the term in this bracket. So we'll take the percentage change in earnings, okay, minus percentage change in number of shares outstanding. And then this will be 5% minus uh, negative 1.5%. So that's a uh, 6.5%. Now, lastly, if you're asked to calculate the expected return on US equities in the long run, so take note that in the long run, we assume that the percentage change in shares outstanding will approach zero and there will be no change in the PE multiple. So we will end the percentage change in corporate earnings growth rate should approximate the nominal growth rate, nominal GDP growth rate of the economy, which in this case is uh, 
So in other words, uh, this will be approximately equals to D over P plus the nominal GDP growth rate for the economy. So that will be 2.4% plus 4%. So that will give us a 6.4% expected return on the US equities in the long run.